Hello, grace and peace be multiplied to you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Clean the drunk. Yep. John chapter number 18 is where we are this morning. John chapter 18. John 18, let's make our declaration. Um, let's make our church don't start. Good morning. John chapter number 18, get your friends. Let's do this. Let's make our declaration so we can go straight to God's word. And then I'll see you this evening at church, midweek koinonia. You will love it. It will bless you. Midweek koinonia. See you at church this evening. Okay, let's make our declaration. One, two, three, go. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the beloved of Abba. All my sins are forgiven. I'm passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiving. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. I have the multipliers anointing. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. The supernatural is natural to me. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Fantastic. John chapter number 18. John chapter number 18. John chapter number 18 from verse 1. Father, bless your word. As we learn from your word, we are changed, transformed. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter number 18. John chapter number 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out to his, his disciples over the brook Kindred, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betray him, betrayed him, also knew the place. Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Jesus went to a coded place. Of course, Judas knew the coded place knew the coldest place rather. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. I want you to listen to, I want you to think of that very, very closely. Very important. Very important. 
they came to look for Jesus. Judas was there. Then Jesus goes and says, I am he. And as soon as he said, as I am he, he went, fell on the ground. So that Psalm 27 can be fulfilled. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. When my enemies and my foes came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. So even in that action, it was not just for show of power, it was the fulfillment of scriptures. Now, if that happened to Jesus, your prototokos, it can happen to you. It should happen to you. It will happen to you. The day they come against you, they will stumble and they will fall. Who understood what I just said? Who really got what I just said? If you got it, it's fine. If you don't, it's fine. Watch it again. Verse 7. Then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of those whom he gave me, I have lost none so after he said that he said you know you can arrest me and my disciples let these go release them of course they have to release them because they don't want to fall down again because they cannot even explain what happened to them when they fell down verse um verse 10 then simon peter having sword drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear the servant's name is Malchus. He, so Jesus said to Peter, put your sword in your sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Was he talking about a literal cup here? Was he talking about a literal cup here? Those of you who like to look literally, he took the bread, he took the wine, he took the cup. No, was he talking about a literal cup here? What he was just saying, yes, don't you want me to fulfill the assignment that my father has given to me? This was not literal. So when you say, allow me to, to drink water, drop cup, are you really talking about taking water like this and drop the cup? No. He's free me, let me rest. He was talking about the fulfillment of his assignment. Verse 12, then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. Voila, Marcelle, problem have started. And they led him away to Anna's face, for he was the father-in-law of Cyphus, who was high priest that year. Now, it was Cyphus who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. So Cyphus knew prophetically that one man is going to die for everybody. I don't know who the one man is, but the Bible says it is expedient for one man to die for everybody. Now, Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciples. Disciple, rather. Now, the disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Peter is at the door outside. One disciple went inside because he was known by the high priest. Then the other disciple, disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. So one person had connection inside, went with Jesus. That one now went to speak to the person at the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's servant um, disciples, are you? He said, not me, I am not. Now the disciple and officers who had made a fire, of course, stood there. 
for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed themselves. I want you to see something. Now the, the servants and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. I need you to pay, pay attention of that. Pay, atten pay attention of that. Then the high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. And Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I, was, I also taught in synagogues and the temple where the Jews also met. And in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Do you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent and bound, sent him bound to Cyphus, the high priest. Now Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Therefore they said unto him, Are you not also one of his disciples? Are you? He denied it and said, I am not. Now watch this. This is the second time Peter is denying Jesus in this chapter. And the prophecy is that he will deny Jesus three times. But let me show you something. Let me show you something. Verse 25 is where we are. Well, if you go to verse 18, it says, Now the servants and officers who made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. You are likely going to compromise when you want to join unbelievers in warming themselves. You are likely going to compromise when you find yourself in gatherings of unbelievers warming themselves. So Peter was called and wanted to warm himself and went to where the servants and guards were warming themselves. That's where he denied Jesus. You are likely going to compromise. You're likely going to do something that you're not proud of when you keep hanging around people who are not saved and when they want to warm themselves, when they want to have fun, when they just want to chill, when they just want to relax, when they just want to bond, when your company determines who you are, you are likely going to do that. You're going to compromise for comfort. You are likely going to compromise for comfort. Just a little fire won't hurt anyone. Just a, uh, just a little hangout. It's not really club. It's just that it starts at 10. So it's 10 o'clock we'll leave our house. It's not drinking like that, per se. It's just little tipsy and shisha. No, it's not like the shirt, the skirt was short. It was just fit for the event. Let me know now look off amongst them you are likely going to compromise do something that you'll not be proud of when you always want to warm yourself with people who are not safe yeah. that's it so I just want to show you how to warm yourself. Don't warm yourself with the devils. No, no, no. Very important. Don't be fooled. Evil company corrupts good manners. Period. Let me just go. Let them not think I'm proud. <laughs> you are entering Gotha trying to flee you're trying to warm yourself one of the servants of the high priest a relative of him whose ear peter cut off said did i not see you in the garden with him then peter denied again 
immediately the roster crowed. So Peter denied finally three times. Yeah. Then the it's a little fire. Just a little fire. A little fire. I want to warm yourself. I just went to my I just I don't want to warm ourselves. Just a little fire. I beg it's not a sin to go to club. I didn't say it's a sin. I beg it's not a sin to drink. Jesus turned water to wine. I didn't say it. I didn't say it's a sin. I'm just saying, in that atmosphere of warming yourself, you're going to do something that you would regret. You're going to do something that is contradistinctive to God's. You're going to do something that will be an embarrassment because you just want to warm yourself. You see what I'm saying? Just want to warm yourself. Oh, it's just like, come on, we're just hanging out. That's what that's what Peter did. Okay. Well, just one puff, just one. Uh -huh. Then they led Jesus from Cyphus to the Praetorium, and it was early morning. But they themselves did not go into Praetorium, lest they should be defiled. But that. They might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out and said, went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? Uh, they answered and said unto him, if he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. Pilate said, do you take him and judge him according to your Lord? Therefore the Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he will die. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus, said unto him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You are speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you? Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? Pilate said, I am, am I a Jew? Your own nation and your chief priest have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servant would fight so that I should be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate said, Pilate therefore said unto him, Are you the king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am king for this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? That's a philosophical question. What is truth? What is truth? What is truth? And he had said this, and when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. I find no fault in him at all. That's what, that's, that's what, that was Pilate's testimony. Sir, I have a question. Papa, if these are things you do, sorry, if these are things, Papa, if these are things you do not, you do not with the intention of conversion of faith, and maybe these are like family or close friends, how do you learn to start? You, you stay away. Huh? Family and close friends, you're using sentiment to do your destiny or your work with God. After a while, they will know where you, you, you would like to hang out. Because there'll be clean places, there'll be nice places for you to hang out. You can be in a very beautiful, fancy restaurant. And you, you guys have dinner. And they, no. So because it's my cousin is doing, oh, I have to go there for family. You're just being sentimental. You don't, because they, are they coming to church because you're family? Are they following you to pyramid because you're family? Are they on this life, this money because you're family? No. 
They don't do so. Why are you doing that? Be serious with your faith. Let them know that you are serious with your faith. If your office says that they will sack you if you go there, will you go? You will not go because you want your job. Show when they pay you away. 39. Let them know where you stand. Sentiment. Let them know where you stand. The fact that they don't know where you stand right now even bothers me the more. I'm just trying to blend with them. Are they blending with you to church? Are they blending with you this early morning? Can you tag them? Hey, blenders, good morning. Are they blending with you this morning to hear the word of God? Have they blended with you to do LFC? Have they blended with you to do LDC? Why do you keep blending to them to do their own? No. After a while, they would know where you stand. Growing up as a teenager, I had cousins in court. Had cousins in all manner of things. One of them was the big boy at the club. They knew not to invite me there. They knew what not to say around me. Even my older cousins would tell people that, and when you get to him, please, my older cousins say, don't, please, let's, we can't, we can't smoke where Pastor Flourish is. When we leave his house. This was for me. You mean like this? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. People of God. People of God. But you have a custom, verse 39, that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they all cried again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was an Oju Okukoro, was an Ole Bruku somebody. We'll deal with this Barabbas story um, the next time we meet here and you it will bless you. It will really, 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 really bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God. If your if your work with Christ has not reached the place where they are calling you pastor, Mary Amaka, spiritual, Pastor Flourish daughter, ha, logic girl, P flow people, ha, logic people, grace people, so so preaching. Ah, uh, that one, that Pastor Flourish speaking, you know, yeah. Just watch Nigel be talk. If you are not there yet, you haven't started, to be honest. You have, you have I can assure you. Yes. Those of you, they already, already call you that. You know what I'm talking about. Declaration 37. Declaration 37. Declaration 37. From the book, Prayer As You Go. Christocentric people. All these Christocentric people, grace people. I want peace flow. Now people will be giving me that to uh, Jesus baby. Ah, uh, just watch you. He goes so sad to the preach. I'll not tell you. I'll not tell you. I'll not tell you. Bam. You don't start. I didn't tell you, the girl. <laughs> In Ogoyo, if you have not gotten to that place, someone said I'm preaching the gospel of people. Yes. If you, if they if they don't start calling you that, you have not started. You're preaching the gospel of Piflo that Piflo wrote in the Bible. Oshé, wise one. You are preaching the gospel of Piflo that Piflo himself wrote in the Bible. Abi, grace people. Ah, they don't come. Home. Grace people. Ah, these people. Ah, beg, beg, beg. If you have not gotten to this place, people of God, you have not started. They must know where you stand. Some of you used to have AKA or, or aliases when you were in the world. And with the gospel now, Arike, that's it. Pastor PK is all I hear now. Pastor Clint, yes. 
Say, ah, we, are we carry the gospel on our head. That's how we carry the gospel, on our head. We don't carry it like this. We don't wave it. We carry it on our head. Yes. Loud down. Declaration 37. Let's do this and go. Let me pray with you. And I'll see you this evening at church. It's really going to be powerful. I want to, I want to deal with um, the angelic host that we started on Sunday. I want to open it the more. My mom calls me Dickiness. Yes. Yes. Mm, yes. It's better than a buyer. It's better than prostitute. It's better than small girl be God. Yes. It's good. You should be unashamed of the gospel. Jesus died naked on the cross. Are you aware there was nothing on his waist? He died a shameful naked death. I'm not your church member, so I need to get your books. They're available at church. You can get my books. Get this too. Well, Declaration 37, let's go, let's go, let's go. Glory to God. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit of God. You miss Wednesday service. That's where you get all your testimonies. Then come to church on Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. The believer is not a natural man. He is not ordinary. Every believer should have this consciousness so they won't be trapped by natural occurrences. He that is born of the Spirit is Spirit, Jesus said. Live in your reality as a supernatural being. Somebody shout, I am supernatural. Come on, I can't hear you. Shout, I'm supernatural. Oh, I'm not supposed to hear you. Say, I'm supernatural. Say the, nat the supernatural is natural to me. Come on, say the supernatural is natural to me. Today, I decree and declare that you are a powerhouse and you are the temple of God. I decree and declare that you are a powerhouse and that you are the temple of God. I decree and declare that you are a powerhouse and that you are the temple of God. That you are spirit being. And you display the character of the spirit. And you express the fruit of the spirit. And demonstrate the gifts of the spirit. I decree and declare one more time. That you are spirit being. And therefore you display the character of the spirit. And you express the fruit of the spirit. And demonstrate the gifts of the spirit. The spirit realm is more familiar to you. Than your natural realm. In the name of Jesus. I decree one more time. This is very powerful. You know, this is so powerful for me. I'm going to fold it to something I need to read again and again. Yeah. I and I declare that I, you are a spirit being and you display the character of the spirit. I decree that you express the fruit of the spirit. I decree that you demonstrate the gifts of the spirit. And the spirit realm is more familiar to you than your natural realm. I'm going to have to say that again. I decree and declare that you are a spirit being and you display the character of the spirit, Shandai. You express the fruit of the spirit and demonstrate the gifts of the spirit. The spirit realm is more familiar to you than the natural realm. I decree that you are a holy being and you have the nature of God. On the scale of holiness, you weigh as the same as God. I decree that holiness is not a height that you are striving to attain. It is the nature of God inside of you and that you have obtained and it has been installed in your spirit through salvation. I decree that you are born of the spirit, therefore you are unpredictable. I decree because you are born of the spirit, you are unpredictable. No man can track you, no man can monitor you, no man can um, destabilize you, nobody can, can manipulate you. I decree that you cannot be monitored because you are a spirit. I decree that you carry the supernatural DNA and you an incorruptible DNA of God. I decree that you are in the God class and you are created in the image of God. I decree and declare that you have the DNA of a winner. I decree and declare that you wear the crown of favor. Royal blood flows through your vein. The spirit of God lives in you. The things the spirit, the things of the spirit are your playground. In the name of Jesus. 
I decree and declare that nothing can hurt you because you are a spiritual being. I decree and declare that above all things you live above the systems, policies, hardship, principles of this realm. I decree and declare that above all things you live above the systems, policies, hardship, and principles of this world. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the word of God, um, word of God, that the word of God described in, I decree and declare, sorry, that the word of God described the, the first Adam, a quickening spirit, but you, a, a living soul, but indeed you are a quickening spirit. I decree that you are a quickening spirit and you are everything God has called you to be and to do. You are supernatural. The gifts are natural to you. The fruits are natural to you. The demonstration of God's grace are natural to you. I bless your day, bless your week, bless your near year in Jesus' matchless name. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you. Have a flourishing day ahead of you. In Jesus' precious name, blessings.